So we know that acne uh, is very, very prevalent. Uh, the epidemiology and social impact are very significant, uh, both from uh, the aspect of young adults where it affects uh, at one point up to 85% of individuals age 12 to 25, uh, as well as adult women, 35%, uh, 37% age 25 to 50, and about 25% of adult male uh, males uh, 25 to 50 as well. Uh, aside from the clinical aspect and certainly uh, the um, uh, scarring that presents, uh, negative sequelae include uh, social withdrawal, anxiety and depression, um, and really being very self-conscious uh, regarding uh, the patient's skin. Um, as providers, we look for acne treatments to be safe, effective, and tolerable. And whatever we use, uh, it should really uh, look uh, to satisfy uh, these three categories. So let's th look a little bit at the etiology of acne. Um, Acne uh, starts uh, probably with a combination of the first two things. Uh, certainly, excess sebum is the basis uh, of this. And as we know, excess sebum uh, comes from two aspects in acne, a genetic predisposition as well as hormones. Um, and that's certainly the, the key aspect of why it, it appears during um, early adolescence. Um, the second is is known very well, which is perifollicular inflammation. Um, this is probably one of the hallmarks of early acne, um, and uh, it uh, um, really shows early on with uh, formation of comedones. We have follicular hyperkeratinization, um, which uh, causes clogging in a number of aspects, and uh, there's also colonization of P. acnes. And, and there's a, an, a very significant uh, ramp up uh, that you can see in these uh, um, depictions here of the issue of sebum formation, um, with trap sebum, inflammation, uh, peak uh, acne colonization, um, inflammation, uh, whether it be uh, papules, uh, pustules, uh, or cysts from that perspective. So the current treatment algorithms uh, for acne um, are certainly can be complicated. Um, oftentimes, they have limited efficacy. It depends on the patient and the type of um, uh, condition they're presenting with. Um, mild acne, uh, generally, uh, we use um, uh, topical retinoids uh, for comodomal acne. Um, and uh, alternative to that may be uh, salicylic acid, um, azelaic acid, uh, uh, and sometimes in the aspect of washes as well. Um, mild mixed papular, uh, pustular, uh, comedonal acne, again, topical retinoids. Uh, uh, physicians are getting away from using um, antibiotics. The topical antimicrobial um, is probably more... Uh, BPO in this case, uh, certainly topical retinoids um, uh, or azelaic acid uh, as well. And the maintenance uh, for this is very often uh, topical retinoids. When you get into moderate acne, um, uh, there's a, a mixed uh, choice that uh, many individuals um, uh, go to oral antibiotics. Doxycycline is the primary one, uh, but but I think that the main acne group is trying uh, for a number of reasons to get away from uh, the use of oral antibiotic because of antibiotic resistant bacteria um, that is uh, um, forming across um, not just acne patients, but all patients because of the overuse of antibiotics. So uh, this is something that is uh, uh, phasing out very quickly. Um, topical retinoids, uh, topical BPO uh, is uh, certainly used. And in women, uh, very often we use uh, oral antiandrogen, spironolactone, um, uh, and other agents as well. Um, for nodular acne, um, more moderate uh, tours towards severe um, combination therapies are often used. Um, oral antibiotics, at least for present time, topical retinoids, 
um, uh, isotretinoin um, is uh, uh, used in this population, uh, either in combination and certainly in women, uh, very, very often there is an oral antiangiogen in addition um, to this. And certainly in nodular uh, severe acne, uh, isotretinoin has uh, certainly over the years uh, been the drug of choice. Uh, there are certainly other alternatives. Uh, not everybody can tolerate that as well. Uh, and uh, as you see uh, in uh, women, um, the antiandrogens are also uh, effective. Uh, maintenance therapy uh, is always probably use of topical retinoids and BPO, but uh, for many individuals, um, the orals um, are necessary in more severe cases. Now, we know that, that compliance is a major issue um, for success in acne, uh, and this is just uh, a depiction of uh, the difficulty in keeping our patients uh, compliant with taking medications. We know this not just for oral medications, uh, but also for topicals. Uh, and you can see this study that showed um, that uh, just uh, 25 to 30 uh, percent uh, of the prescriptions are taken properly, even less are refilled as prescribed and taken. And this is certainly a challenge for our, our acne patients. Uh, and of course, we know that uh, getting prescriptions filled and getting them paid for is a royal pain in the neck, not just for our patients, but for our offices and our staff, uh, getting uh, 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 prescriptions uh, approved is a full-time job for a lot of staff members. Um, but more than that, uh, patients also uh, have much more out-of-pocket costs uh, for a variety of prescriptions. And this is just showing um, a variety of different prescriptions. Uh, and actually, the prices uh, in the U.S. and much of the cost is borne now by the patient. Uh, uh, and this also cuts down on compliance. Additionally, as we know, uh, acne treatments often take significant time to show results, um, and, and significant improvement can take six to 12 weeks uh, as well. And because of this, and because of the technology and, and the issue of where it treats with the sebaceous gland, it, it appears, and we have seen it uh, have significant effectiveness uh, on the entire spectrum of comedonal papulopustular and nodular cystic acne from mild to severe. Uh, and that's really uh, one of the benefits uh, of the technology. The other thing that can happen uh, and that we see is that we get very quick clearing of results because of its action, both quickly on the acnes as well as on the decreased sebum production. Uh, we see uh, results uh, occurring very often within the first two weeks uh, of treatment and uh, quickly gaining speed thereafter, whereas RX treatments take a lot longer uh, to work. And here are some examples. Um, you can see here very, very nice clearance um, before and after two months uh, with four treatments. One of the things that we see, and you'll see this uh, on a couple of the pictures going forward, is in addition to quick clearance, um, what we also tend to see is longevity of results. Um, and again, I think that is because of the action on the sebaceous gland, which uh, decreases sebum production long term. So this is one of my patients here. You have a patient of Dr. David Goldberg's here, uh, three months after five treatments. And our standard is, is four treatments. Uh, and this is a severe patient uh, uh, here, uh, uh, 13 months after five treatments, uh, uh, one of Michael Gold's patients uh, as well. So you can see the spectrum of uh, treatment here um, significantly. Uh, this is before and after three treatments, Kevin Pinsky. Um, you can see that as well. And uh, here's another patient showing a beautiful result uh, before and after three treatments um, with spade, uh, uh, out of spade skin care. 
The beauty also of this is that because it's a 1064 YAG laser and because of 650 uh, microsecond, um, it's safe and tolerable with any skin type. And this is our definite go-to with African-American patients who tend to have post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Uh, and we've had excellent results. And here's um, three treatments, courtesy of Michelle Henry, uh, showing uh, Fitzpatrick type 6 African-American patient. Again, another one, uh, another patient uh, showing significant reduction. Now, the, the nice thing here, and you can kind of see it uh, here as well is uh, because we're also affecting uh, the small blood vessels, the amount of redness um, uh, and uh, microinflammation in blood vessels and telangiectasis also um, is reduced. So the question then becomes uh, how difficult it is to uh, offer and have patients accept NeoClear. And what we found is that patients are really very happy to look at alternatives, especially something that has no side effects really, and that is painless. Um, that is something that not only patients, but family members, mothers, fathers are very, very open uh, to look at and try. Um, the issue of the irritation of uh, topicals, of uh, side effects, from oral antibiotics as well as isotretinoin um, really uh, prods a lot of our patients and their family members to look for alternatives very quickly. So uh, this is a, an example of uh, patients who are looking um, for treatment or acne. Uh, so that some do it right away. Some think about it, may try other things, um, and uh, ultimately uh, a great number of them um, uh, are open and sign up for uh, NeoClear uh, treatments. Typically for an acne patient, we typically treat between one to two weeks apart per treatment. On the average, we treat about four to five treatments for an acne patient. We're treating using the same parameters. Um, the only thing that would differ, we're still going to do, for example, acne, we're going to do, we might go towards, especially with a Fitzpatrick one through three, or even four, we'll go to a higher energy mode. But then after doing three full passes of the face, um, we are targeting the individual lesions with um, more pulses and sometimes switching over to a two millimeter lens to really talk, uh, target the lesions themselves. So um, the more inflammatory lesions they have, papular pustular lesions, even some cysts, we are um, hitting those after the full three passes with um, multiple extra pulses, anywhere from three to five to up to 10 pulses per uh, lesion, inflammatory lesion.